What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on Marvel's Avengers and we actually have some additional details that the developers have revealed to us which is crazy because we got a lot of new information during the War Table stream but Crystal Dynamics seems adamant about elaborating on things even further than they already have. A few days ago they took to Reddit to answer our questions so I'm gonna give you my thoughts but before we do so I wanna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor G2A. If you're looking for a way to purchase the hottest video games without burning a hole in your wallet you should really consider checking them out. They offer key codes for different products such as Steam, PS Network, and Xbox were half the price of the original. Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of this deal? You absolutely lose when you overpay. So go ahead and seize the win now. You can do so by clicking the link that will be provided in the description box below. But as I was saying guys, Crystal Dynamics has been doing a rapid fire on new information regarding Marvel's Avengers, which in all honesty only gets me even more hype because we're so close to the release date and they've got a lot of catching up to do in regards to the overall marketing. Things have been picking up very fast and the more we know about this game the more we can look forward to it when it comes out. As I mentioned the devs have recently taken to reddit to answer some of our questions regarding things like free roam and post launch or in game content. Like it was crazy how many things they explained to us. Now I just gotta say that I'm a little late on covering all these things like last week was a busy one for me with all the war table details and other things I had to cover on this channel. Not to mention that Crystal just keeps pumping out these updates so I wasn't sure if I wanted to cover this Q&A but I know you guys love picking my brain when it comes to these kinds of things so I'm gonna do my best to elaborate on it but anyways Marvel's Avengers Warzone director Felipe Therian took to reddit to answer all of our questions and the first thing that was asked was if there will be missions with non-action elements i.e. puzzles science slash tech investigation stealth etc and if the game would explore events in the game versus past such as Captain America's World War 2 experience and Phil answers saying we have some light puzzle elements but no investigations. I love your idea about past events, I'll talk about that with the team. So this game is definitely going to have some interesting puzzle mini games to make the gameplay more flexible and I'm honestly hoping it's something that doesn't become mundane like your typical mini games that slow down the pacing because this game is obviously going to be a very action heavy game and I for one don't want to have the action come to a crawl and I really don't want to keep doing the puzzles if they're annoying. Hopefully this game is similar to Marvel Spider-Man where it gives you the option to skip the mini games if you want. Now when it comes to the game vs events that the rated user is asking about I think they're referring to the tie in comics where it gives you a deeper look into what the characters were up to leading up to this game and I initially assumed that the developers would utilize some of these stories for something like the hero chain missions which would essentially fill in the gaps to certain things but it looks like they didn't consider this but they just might now that the idea has been brought up by fans. I think it's a good idea because not that many people have read those comics and there are some cool instances that I wouldn't mind playing like the Hulk vs Thor fight that takes place in New York. But but moving on the next question that's asked is if all the warzone maps have room for flying slash range movement and Phil says that you can fly everywhere including indoors and underground and though the ceilings can be a bit lower inside you won't be forced to walk anywhere except for things like transitions between areas. So this is something that I think a good majority of the fans were worried about. Just how much freedom the game is going to grant the players in terms of roaming around areas. It's something that I wondered about with characters like the Hulk since he can pretty much jump anywhere. And we want to know if there are going to be certain levels that will be tailored to each Avenger. Like is there going to be a certain location where I can find things that couldn't be found unless you have a specific character that can fly. You know is it going to give you different waypoints that can encourage you to replay a level similar to how the Ultimate Alliance games did it. Just making it to where I can essentially use my imagination to access areas that weren't accessible the first time around. Like I think the most asked question revolving around this game is if it will be open sandbox free roam and while I know that it won't be that it's nice to hear that we'll be getting some form of freedom for characters like Iron Man and Thor. Anyways the next questions I want to harp on are going to correlate to the free roam subject we just talked about. The first one is in regards to how high the flight ceiling is and if the Hulk can have a super leap alongside his normal leap and Phil replies saying and I quote I forget exactly what we set the ceiling to be but it's pretty high. In cities and let's just say giant skyscraper you can typically fly at building heights. Hulk can bound super high and far. Another person asked if the Hulk can reach the ceiling from the ground and Phil says that if the Hulk can find something to climb on he can reach it. And I'm guessing this means that you'll have to gradually maneuver from certain obstacles to reach specific areas with the Hulk. If you look at his A day gameplay he seems like he's gonna be one of those climby type characters. Like as much as I wish Hulk could play as he did in Ultimate Destruction I don't think that's the direction Crystal Dynamics is gonna go with in this game. We're not gonna have this supercharged jump or be able to leap from anywhere like he does in the comics. It's gonna be one of those realistic takes similar to what we see in the MCU where he moves like an ape who clings onto different surfaces and launches to other platforms. But continue 
continuing off with the free roam question, we have another that asks if there are going to be times where we can freely explore regions peacefully, or is it just going to be constant action? And my boy Felipe answers saying, and I quote, In between objectives, you are absolutely free to roam as you please and look for points of interest around the level. These can be allies to rescue, bounty enemies to defeat for loot, hidden caches, secret aim stockpiles of resources, or you could raid aim's depots where they store gear. Typically those rewards are defended, but you can roam around the environments without constantly fighting if you want to just to admire the scenery or have fun doing traversal. And I think this pretty much is a good segue into the next question we have, and that's how will loot work? Will it just be drops after destroying enemies and you have to run over it sort of like Minecraft, or will it be specifically in boxes? And Phil answers saying, some loot comes from defeating enemies, some you can acquire from strong boxes in the level, these have different quality levels, gold, silver, and bronze. You can also get loot from completing missions and the better you do at objectives, the better your rewards will be at the end. We also have different resources that you will find in the world, some are more rare than others and some are only found in specific regions. You can pick up the loot or wait for it to come to you, you won't miss anything. And I think this information will put you guys at ease. This game isn't going to have any pay to win scenarios that will make it easier for you to advance through the story. The only thing we don't know is how much grinding you'll have to do to access specific loot. I think the first week of this game's release is going to determine if fans are going to come back and play it, or expose it for being this title that has a sustained focus around loot crates with an unfair progression system. It's already getting compared to games like Anthem and Destiny for its very similar gear system and games as a service business model, but I'm very optimistic that this will be a game that will have a fair balance of all of these things. The devs have already promised that everything will be unlockable by playing the game and that additional heroes and missions will be absolutely free. The only thing that will be put behind a paywall or post lunch cosmetics for each Avengers member. You can spot Kamala Khan opening what seems to be a loot chest in the War Zones trailer. But moving on, the next question that was asked is how big can we expect the War Zones like the one we see Thor flying over rooftops with Hulk and Miss Marvel following below. And Phil replies saying and I quote, it's hard to give exact numbers but typically when you enter a War Zone your first objective could be 300 to 400 meters away. And there are multiple objectives to a War Zone plus some optional spaces to explore. In a city this would mean that you get several city blocks worth in a single mission. Now as I'm making this video, Crystal Dynamics tweeted out this awesome picture on the Avengers Twitter handle, and I think it gives us a general idea of how much depth and dimension these Warzone stages are going to have. It also makes me think of all the different approaches I can take in regards to completing missions. I can go in all gung ho with a die bomber Iron Man if I want to, or I can do things stealthily and take out enemies one by one. Like I'm seriously getting some Metal Gear Solid vibes here when it comes to how expansive some of these maps are. And the fact that there are going to be multiple characters as opposed to one makes this even more exciting. Like I'm going to have a field day with flying characters on these types of levels. You can see the sheer amount of depth these stages will have throughout some of the trailers. But moving on, the next question is an interesting one. They ask if we're playing with an AI team, are we going to be able to switch between characters? And Phil states that you would have to leave the mission to select different Avengers to play with. Now I'm not going to lie to you, this is a bit disappointing. Considering the fact that Marvel's Avengers has been compared to the likes of Marvel Ultimate Alliance, fans were expecting to be able to switch between characters on the fly in the midst of battle. I felt like that was an obvious thing to include, especially since other action RPG games in recent years have done it. And the fact that we don't have this feature could potentially hurt this game. Like we've seen what happened to Final Fantasy XV when it launched without this feature. It was basically a death sentence. People wanted to have control of all these characters because they're all unique. We want to be able to control all these characters because of these RPG elements, and we want to create more scenarios as opposed to being stuck with playing with one character on this expensive battlefield. Not to mention that we don't know how smart the AI support characters are going to be in this game. Like I've seen some stupid AI before in games like Final Fantasy VII Remake where if you allow a zoning type character like Aerith to do her thing, she'll try to fight close up and end up dying. And we haven't even got the slightest info on how health is going to work for the support characters or if we'll be able to revive them. That's something I wish I asked when the Q&A was live and I'm hoping that we get the opportunity to get another one. Other than the Hulk who's pretty much invulnerable, I'm not expecting other characters to be able to withstand all kinds of damage. I'm hoping that Crystal Dynamics incorporates character switching through a patch somewhere down the line like Final Fantasy XV did, so we can have more control. But anyways, the next question that we have are how the post lunch content will be handled. One question asked how in game content is going to be while we wait for newer content. Will there be a higher form of content like raids or something to take our gear out built into and really progress towards? Anthem didn't have any reason to make the perfect build because we had no place to take the gear and really push. And Phil answers saying and I quote, 
I can tell you that Vince and I are absolutely passionate about in-game content. We will have hives which are gauntlets that challenge your entire roster of heroes. Bosses and villains will make appearances. We also have two other in-game pieces of content that I'm not allowed to talk about just yet, but I can't wait to show you. Likely in an upcoming War Table event. We want to show you guys a roadmap for this and it's going to be a mix of new stories, events, and in-game challenges, so stay tuned. So yeah, it looks like the developers are well aware of the demand for post-launch content and already have a lot of plans in place. And I have no doubt that the Hive challenges are going to keep me occupied while I wait for newer content. I'm looking forward to collaborating with other content creators covering this game as well as some of you guys. But with that, I'm going to end this video. There were a lot of questions asked in this Reddit thread and I'm pretty sure I only picked up a fraction of all the cool stuff that Philip went over. But hopefully this will suffice. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you like how expansive the war zones are going to be? And how do you feel about not being able to switch different characters on the fly? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on different social media platforms. Sharing really makes a difference. Well, once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.